Yo, stop everyone! Yeah, good evening everybody! How are you guys doing? Yeah, uh, to all my Muslim friends, Selamat berbuka puasa. I hope you had a wonderful dinner. And to all my non-Muslim friends, you know, I hope you enjoyed a scrumptious and delicious dinner as well. And I also had very good, I had Korean food. Beautiful, beautiful, wonderful food. Yeah, anyway, people... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, I, so I'm getting this comment quite a bit uh, by Kay. Kay is telling me that he's seeing me more than he sees his mother nowadays. Yeah, if you think you're seeing me more, you know, uh, just write there one in the comment there. Hi, Calvin. Hi, Kay. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Maria. Yeah, everyone. Tonight, tonight, tonight is really special. Now it's 30, right? And I will not do a long introduction. The reason why, because tonight we have someone very interesting with her, with, that we have with us. She is Su Yin. Now, who of you actually have heard of Su Yin before? You know, just write there in the comment, Su Yin, yeah, and we'll welcome her on, right? And at the meantime, when I wait for you guys to respond, just one thing, right? If today is the first time that you're on the channel on Mr. Money TV, Mr. Money TV is the first financial edutainment channel in Malaysia. So what does that even mean, financial edutainment? It means learning about money can be fun. And it means we are like Bloomberg, but not Bloomberg. More funny than Bloomberg. That's what we are. So tonight we have Suyin here with us and let us bring Suyin on right now. Hi everyone. <laughs> you see what the clapping when I'm clapping for Suyin? <laughs> Where? I cannot see. Yeah. <laughs> Suyin, yeah. So um, maybe up? Suyin, you want to introduce yourself a little bit for uh, the Mr. Moneymakers out there who are actually following my channels. Because although we do have quite a similar group of followers, but um, I think some of them here may not know you and some of your side there may not know me, right? Yeah, so mm -hmm. maybe you want to do an introduction. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Suyin and I'm just a regular person. I make YouTube videos about money and investing so that more of us can talk about it and figure it out together. Actually, I met Mr. Money TV through YouTube and he's the most persistent guy. Like, he's been like hounding me like, hey, let's meet up. That was the first time we uh, connected. And then he was like, oh, let's make a video together. He's always the one leading the show. Like, and I'm just like, oh, really? Uh, let's do this. Uh, okay. Like. <laughs> a bit more shy. Sure. <laughs> so the thing is this yeah i think we started uh we started youtube about the same time right Swin? yeah yeah you told me it started in december 2018 and i started yes this time last year like a couple of months later mm -mm -mm. so now it's like uh exactly it is one year for you already right yeah birthday Channel wow, birthday. congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Wonderful, yeah. So I remember the first time we met, we met in um, Starling Mall. Yeah, we right. met up there. Yeah. So uh, so me and Suin both, uh, we are one of the, we would, I would say that we are one of the first consistent uh, financial YouTubers around in Malaysia. Uh, so we both decided to do something uh, and yeah, talk about money. Yeah. And that time being just me and her, one day I just suddenly saw like, hey, there's this girl, you know, she's all talking about money. Then like uh, clicked into it and see this girl talking about money. And I was like, hey, you know, maybe I should ask her out. Maybe you can collaborate. Because because there were a lot of financial bloggers around already. Quite many, lah. not too many, but yeah, quite many. That's true. Uh, but YouTuber, there was only two of us at the time, right? Uh, there were others as well, uh, Chinese speaking mainly. Uh, Spark then Liang. just Yeah, Spark Liang. Yes, that's right. So he was the guy who kind of like inspired me to like, hey, you know, there's a market for this. We should do something about it. But I remember, Suin, tonight, right? Tonight, since we're going to start off by talking about comments that we get about stock investing. Guys, um, you know what? We are getting so many messages most of the time. Uh, and this message evolved, okay? Yeah, this message evolved over time. And so tonight, actually, we want to talk about um, what are the most common questions that we get. Yeah, and that will definitely include stock investment. But tonight, right, when we start, right, I want to ask you, Suyin, what are, what are the most earliest comments you get when you first started 
your uh, YouTube career? What is uh, the most yeah, <laughs> memorable ones in the early career? Okay, so actually guys, what Peter is getting at is that when I first started YouTube, I think it was like five videos in or something, it got picked up on Lao Yat. And, you know, uh, people being uh, internet trolls and things like that, they started commenting like, oh, show your tits, you'll get more views. And uh, stop talking about finance, just show your tits. It's okay, you don't have tits, things like that. It's like, oh my God, that's the, <laughs> that's the worst part of being on the internet is that you're going to get all of these kind of comments. And Peter is talking about it now because he was one of the first few who were like defending like hey why are you like this huh? like just he was very nice about it he was trying to defend my honor so yeah he was trying to make me relieve this story <laughs> <laughs> i still remember that, that was the first time that i got to know uh got to hear about swin that was oh the first time God. that i just saw a swin thing and just very quickly the next day right i said people wrote there you know the comment were like hey tete mana tete hey i felt they- uh, we're lower, you know, this kind of, this kind of comment. Right? I was thinking to myself, hey, yo, uh, so, <laughs> so, apa lah, do not come from where, how can talk like that, uh? then comment lah, you know, then we all talk there, then after that, I asked her out, yeah, that was uh, one of yeah. the earliest one. And I think, I think for myself, the most early comments that uh, I get earlier, uh, I, I, I'm fortunate enough that I didn't get any lewd comment, no one asked me like, hey, buntut, no mana buntut, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or, or no one actually write tete, apa tete lah, to me lah. No one actually say that. Uh, but I think um, uh, I think the most funny comment that I get uh, uh, is got one time, one time I remember I did, uh, so I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Those of you guys who actually know, uh, watching the channel, you know. So once actually uh-huh. I had a black eye. Yeah, I had a, I had a black <laughs> eye because uh, I had a, we all, we all fight in spa. So the guy bumped me in the eye and I was just black. So I remember lah, that was when all the comments come lah. Like, hey, you you don't talk about money lah, you talk about fighting lah. Or like, uh, you, <laughs> I think something happened to your eye because you try to uh, cheat other people or like try to cow Louis or something like that. Oh my <laughs> so God. very mild compared to yours. Yeah. Yeah, but you should, you should um, tag that video in the comments later so we can check it out and check out your black eye lah. <laughs> yeah, I still remember. I was thinking to myself, should I even do a video with the black eye? That was so embarrassing, right? Yeah, but in the end, we still did it. La. Yeah. So anyway, it's been about a year plus for me as well, a year for you. Uh, and I think over the years, our channel has grew. And mm. thank you very much, uh, people who are following this channel uh, and following Suyin. Uh, you can find both of our contents. Uh, we both worked together before uh, on some of the contents. We did have, a, have yeah, one we that we actually we talked about. No yeah, money, we, no we honey. We talked about money. Yeah, no money, no honey. That's right. Yeah, that was a good one. So tonight, yeah, yeah. tonight, uh, let's not waste time. Let us just go straight into what are some of the most common questions that we actually get during this time, right? I believe all of y'all will be wondering, what kind of questions are we getting? Because while you are thinking about all the questions, right? You have only one brain, right? But we are very lucky. We are on YouTube. We are very blessed, huh? And so we get all sort of people texting us all sort of funny stuff. Do you get that as well, Suyin? Yeah, I mean, like, there are people who are, you know, genuinely very interested in uh, our opinions and uh, how, we, how we learn or how we do certain things. But occasionally, we get really odd ones as well. Uh. Yeah, yeah, really, really odd ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we can start with the common ones first, lah. Uh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, why not stream? You just shoot with the most common one that you're getting lately. Mm, lately. Uh, actually, lately, a lot of people have been very on the ball and very excited about the stock market. So they normally ask me about brokerage accounts, like CDS accounts. Mm. Yeah, and I, I have like quite a very, or not, not a very satisfying answer. Uh, do, you get, do you get that a lot? Like brokerage account questions? So what do they ask you? Like, uh, which brokerage account is the cheapest yeah, or yeah. something like that? Uh, hmm. They don't necessarily ask for cheapest. They just want a tutorial on how to go about using it and also which is my preferred one. So hmm. if we do a quick Google search, we can actually see a comparison, whether it's like iMoney or Kale, Kale, I don't know, like 
whatever like comes up and they yeah, give you like direct comparison. Up, like, yeah. Mm, but for me personally, I gravitate to two CDS accounts, but one is actually very expensive relative mm-hmm. to the rest. But I like the interface. And it is okay. also connected to a portfolio manager that I use, so that's why I keep using it, even though it's mm. not very cheap to use. So I don't really like to recommend it because it's not exactly cost effective. But mm. I know you like Rakuten. A lot of people like Rakuten. Yeah, yeah, I like mm. Rakuten because I I'm I'm cheap skate a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the cheapest that you can find. And number two, I don't need to meet someone to keep signing things. Because you know, you gotta yeah, sign the whole online. thing stuff, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. like, wow, I tell you, actually, I have more than four brokerage accounts. Huh? Yeah, I have more than four. Yeah, because wow, I, I mean, okay. I'm so long already. Yeah. I'm like, since the day I graduated, I've been investing in the stock market, right? So mm-hmm. uh, it's just that I stopped for quite a long period to switch off to property investment. Uh, and uh, But I started off with CIMB I trade earlier. Mm. Mm, when I first started with CIMB I trade, it was the second cheapest to Jupiter. Uh, I liked it because at that time, many of my friends use it, simple as that, and the price was okay, cheapest for all those, uh, you know, standard brokerage around. Then I still remember I had to sign that one whole thick stack of stuff, which is so damn annoying. Oh, yeah. 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 And then after that, I started uh then i changed to rhb mm. then i use rhb because my friend recommended me a remiser and uh, he was a very experienced remiser uh but i think because i didn't have a lot of money so he didn't really bother about me la. <laughs> when i asked him too much of questions he didn't really bother i just oh, just like no. that <laughs> okay so I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah, so time to do it. Yeah, but he's a very experienced reminder. Um, and then uh, and then after that, I switched to Jupiter. Hmm. Jupiter, yeah. And I had opened another public bank's trading account, but I never use it. Yeah, because uh, I just uh, I think all of you will know if you follow my channel. You don't know that I love public bank as an investment, but I don't really love. Okay, I wouldn't say I love them as an investor. I like them as a bank, as an investment, but I don't like them as a customer because uh, I think in terms of uh, online interface and everything, they're a bit slow. Yeah, you all know like, they're very traditional, right? Yeah. Then, um, so I didn't use them. Then I use, uh, what do you call that? I use Jupiter. And then after I use Jupiter, then now I switch to Rakuten. Yeah, but unfortunately, Rakuten is a nominee account, so you can't do IPO. Yeah, um... That's, yeah, that's so the that's only thing I don't really like about Rakuten. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. I prefer but, yeah, direct I... CDS. Mm, mm. So have you actually done IPO before? Um, I personally don't subscribe to IPOs because uh, the tagline is uh, it's too expensive or, or like it's overvalued. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember yeah, what, yeah. what's the acronym for it. Uh, yeah, never mind. I'll, f- I'll figure it out later. But basically, it is usually very much overpriced <laughs> unless you're in somewhere like the US uh, where you know that they really shoot up post-IPO. Things like uh, Beyond Meat and things like that, right? But true, true, true. what I do enjoy about Direct CS, oh, by the way, I use Maybank and Kananga. Maybank is the cheaper mm. one, but the interface is a bit susah to use. Kananga is easier, uh, but more costly. Um, yeah, I attend AGMs personally, so I'm very lazy to email Rakuten every time I need to attend an AGM. So that is the hassle of being a nominee account instead of a direct CDS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Well, until now, I haven't been to AGM, you know. Every time they send me letters or anything, I didn't bother. And I don't never? Go <laughs> no, I never go. Yeah. Because I, but, but I realized that I just should go, you know. Because, huh? At least go the uh, number one, you got a lot of goodies and uh, usually they give you a lot of stuff. Yeah, right? I got, got <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but usually I never go because like uh I feel like a lot of information you can actually find out right after that. And the truth is I won't raise up my hand and ask question. Yeah, so I feel like it's wasting my time. Then uh but nowadays I may go because now I do no now now we are on YouTube lah. So I yeah. think going itself is more uh, reasons to go. 
yeah, there, there's things to talk about. I can show you guys. But if not for myself, nah, I, I never you been know? to. Yeah. Now, hey. I, I would now. I would now. Yeah, I would now. Last oh, time, no. Now Last you time, cannot go. Been. Now it's online. Yeah. Yeah, now it's online. Now cannot go. No more doggy. <laughs> No what I'll give that's right yeah so um some people also ask question along the way you know what guys if you have question you can actually just throw it along the way we'll pick up some question and also answer uh yeah, yeah. i think i'm just going to put this up here wong chiman actually asks uh, what does your current portfolio of investment look like yeah so uh, i think it's also one of the most common question that i'm getting are you getting yeah. this question a lot as we Yeah, they want to have a look at my personal portfolio and they ask me like what stocks do I invest in? Like very very specific. But mm. I've never answered what I hold. Oh, okay. 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 So uh so so far when never anyone asked you about what stocks do you hold, you actually don't tell them. Like. Yeah, because uh I'm get I get very scared, you know, like what if they buy the stocks that I hold? uh it, which is a good thing cuz like you know more people buy then it will push the price up hopefully i finish mm-hmm. buying already by then but what i'm afraid of is that if they blindly follow without a similar strategy it will get them into trouble and i cannot live with that i cannot sleep at night so <laughs> yeah so what i do right is i i automatically say oh but i have friends who uh disclose their portfolio check out dividend magic and stock monger because they disclose their portfolio and you can you know learn from them or like get ideas from them and then i was talking to dividend magic and he was like oh so you disclose your face but not your portfolio and i say yeah la. like you yeah, disclose your portfolio but not your face la. but you don't disclose face yeah <laughs> so we have seen dividend magic both of us has met him uh yeah. and yeah he he will never show his face he never show his face yeah but he's more than happy to show his portfolio which um uh, i even i myself i'm not as comfortable in showing my portfolio lah to be mm. honest not until that level lah i i tell you guys what i buy but i won't tell you the amount and everything all uh, so why does, you know, why don't you why don't i okay yeah. so what? let me tell you one of the interesting question that i got lately so recently i received a message from someone who she texted me and say i need your help outside oh. Oh, why ah? Uh? Then he said urgent. I was like, urgent ah. Uh? So I replied <laughs> him. Then this person suddenly tell me, you know what? I saw your video about um the the stocks that are that are selling at the market price below their book value. Oh, hmm. undervalued. So I I did one like that. I did one a video like what the top ten stocks that are actually selling below their book value mm, at this point. I saw that uh, one. Yes, so I also put there that it's not a recommendation to buy and sell. It's just for education and information purpose. I mean, standard lah. It's a topic, right? Yeah. Then he told me actually I bought some of the socks there. Oh no! <laughs> uh, and now I'm losing money. What should I do? Oh. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, I serious? <laughs> then he say, don't worry, I'm not blaming you. I shouldn't have. Uh, I shouldn't have. I should have done my study. Uh, so. What? So then I told him lor, and luckily the stock that he bought there is okay one. It's those long term holding stocks. Lah. In fact, some of them I want to buy. Just that I don't think I'll buy it right now. Yeah, yeah. I'll buy it later. Not uh, cheap when, enough, huh? Yeah, when, uh, like for example, one of the ones that I want to buy is the Kiri Genting lah. I'm I'm very open about what I want to buy. I just don't tell the amount. So I'm a bit different also in that sense. So like for me, um, I I want to buy Genting eventually. When the whole coronavirus settles, because mm. I still think it's a very good business model. They have a very good economic mode. Uh, they have a lot of cash, strong growth. Uh, I mean, it's good thing. How yeah. wrong can it be in that sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah. and they are cheap at this point. They are like dirt cheap. Yeah. But the only thing is that uh, when they when they announce their annual report, then even the CEO chairman also say lah, this is the first time we are faced with COVID virus. And this is the first time the whole world is having this issue. So yeah, never before. I also before. don't know. <laughs> first time you hear a chairman saying that in their annual report, right. you know. So uh, I was like, oh, okay, then chill lah. I'm gonna wait. Uh, so the guy actually bought one of it. Is uh, if I'm not wrong, Genting. I can't Genting or so. One of it. Yeah. So I think yeah, there is that concern whenever we tell people what we are buying or what we are interested because when we buy it, we do have a strategy that we want to follow. 
Yeah. Now, we yeah. have our reasoning and why we will want to hold it. And so if you just follow, you don't have that perspective, it may be very dangerous. Huh? Yeah, right? that's true. Like how long you're going to hold it? At what price do you start buying? And how many buying prices are you going to buy at? And when do you start selling? So all of that, they don't have that information. And yeah, I, I don't want them to lose money. Mm. So yeah, I think that is the one thing that sometimes uh, some may prefer to answer you, some may not prefer to answer you. And uh, yeah. even if you answer you, I will make sure that I have time to answer you. La. <laughs> if not, I've got no time to say the caveat. La. I try not to answer. La. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I, some of you are actually asking questions as well. Uh, oh yeah, like difference I see. between Normandy and a direct account. What about Hong Leong e-broking? Have you heard anything about Hong Leong e-broking? I think Hong Leong, I haven't looked at the costs, but I think it's cheaper than Kananga. Uh, they okay so the portfolio manager that I use is part of equities tracker so basically I don't need to track on Excel painstakingly uh, I use Kananga because it can connect to uh, equities trackers portfolio manager Hong Leong is another one that can connect I think it's cheaper but I don't know much about it interface wise mm. oh, but let's answer her question first the difference is uh, with a nominee account you are not actually the direct shareholder so your shares are held in trust by the bank or the entity. And because of that, you cannot sign up for an IPO when uh, a new company starts to issue its shares. Uh, the second difference is that you want to attend AGM, you need to email the, um, the broker to give you permission or to get you permission to enter the AGM. Mm -hmm. A bit more fun. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So the process takes longer. Yeah, like for, for if direct, you are directly invited already. If you're non-direct, yeah. then you need to wait. Yeah, you need like to, I think a month before that, they will send you, a, the your broker would actually send you a message to ask you whether you want to attend or not and stuff like that. So a bit more mm. my fun, a bit more my fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, uh, but for cheaper. me personally, yeah, yeah, cheaper. But I don't I don't sign up for IPO. So I, I, I signed up for one IPO about two years back. Yeah, but that was a Singapore stock. So oh, okay. uh, yeah. they do well. Yeah. Um, I signed up for it, and then in about a few <laughs> a few weeks, I sold it off. Yeah, because <laughs> because uh, as usual, um, because that time I was also starting off a business. Uh, nice. it was quite capital intensive, so I decided to just withdraw it and focus back on putting money la. Yeah, mm, in okay, that area okay. Yeah, cool, so cool. only now my stock portfolio is growing better lah. Cause, <laughs> cause, cause ever since two years ago, uh, I kind of like I I still look at the market, I still study, I still observe, but I don't invest in it that much. Mm. I hold a couple of shares, but I don't really bother because you know two years ago everyone kind of know that the market is a little bit overpriced. On the high side, yeah. yeah, yeah. On the high side, it's very hard to find a good stock. So at the time, I think the only stock that I bought uh, after that was Nestle. Yeah, Ooh. a new stock that I added lah, was Nestle. And I bought it at about 70 ringgit at the time. Yeah. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Hello. Uh, and that's the thing. Uh. <laughs> but, so, yeah, you didn't go to the AGM to get your goodie bag of Nestle products. Uh. No, and the one I bought it with a direct direct one, but I didn't oh. I didn't go. Yeah, I just see the letter and oh, okay, cool. See you, take care. <laughs> But after that, after that, now I think I will definitely go lah. Uh, both for the sake of a, uh, both the sake of a material to put up on YouTube and to show people, and number two, <laughs> okay. also the goodie bags lah. <laughs> yeah, they can take picture with the CEO, the the board of directors. It can have lunch with them also, but I think that's for really, VIP. Yeah? yeah, you can. I think that's for VIP. But normally yeah. the table is surrounded with people. Like, long-time friends or like big um, majority shareholders, things like that. <laughs> okay, you know what? Uh, we have more questions actually. So, someone actually asked. Uh, mm. uh, I think, why not we, we answer one question then we go on with our own question that we get. Okay, what can, about can, that? can, can. All right. Because uh, I think it's similar to what we earlier say. So, I think it's going to be short. 
So what's okay. your top two favorite primary stock holding and why? <sighs> Do you want to answer that or you want to give the FAQ answer that you always give people? <laughs> Top two favorite primary stock holding. Well, I won't tell you what it is, but I'll tell you uh, what it's about. Lah. I really like uh, consumer stocks, like um, the kind of companies where you know people are going to buy regardless uh, whether the economy is good or bad. Uh, actually, yeah, and they pay dividends or like this company pays dividends very consistently. And <laughs> no, I'm beating around the bush, lah, but this is what I do <laughs> when people ask me about stock holdings. Um, and the second one performed pretty well in this time period, so it is quite related to pandemic. So I think that's a very big hint already. Um, and also it's good because, yeah, it's like single use only, lah, so it's repeated purchase mm. for that reason. Right, right. Sounds very interesting. I can guess the first one. Uh, mm. <laughs> I cannot guess the second one though. Oh, I'm still really? thinking oh, of okay. the second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I cannot guess the second one. But I've been hearing there are a few stock tests uh, like that. But yeah. Bingo. Let me see a comment. But, yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, go. let me ask you one question. Then mm. maybe, uh, okay, let me answer Kevin first. Uh. For me, uh, for me, uh, I... I like public bank at this point because uh, although yes, banking get very affected at this time, but I think I'm pretty confident the future prospect of growth in the future uh, in terms of the economy will turn back to be fine. And as usual, uh, when market is bad, bank is the first one that goes down. Uh, and when market is getting better, they are the first one where to go up. So mm. I bought it when it was at the lowest of this year and uh, just a little bit off the lowest, uh, a little bit higher than that. Uh, so now I'm nice. making a profit, pretty happy. Uh, and I'm expecting it to grow more. Uh, but my next next one is actually, um, I also would love to buy Hatta Lega. Some people actually write that Hatta Lega. Yeah, but uh, I won't buy it at this point because I feel that pricing is very high. Uh, Expensive. Yeah, at this yeah. point. Yeah, I won't, I won't buy it. Uh, then, but I am actually... Uh, thinking about, okay, since I tell the first and second one, I don't want to tell. Uh, look at tech company. Uh, <laughs> tech. Okay, good, good, good. Hey, but so I want to ask you, right, how do you feel about that? You you said just now that you don't personally enjoy being a consumer of public bank, but how does that, you know, like if you use that sort of logic, then if more people don't enjoy the process of being a public bank user, wouldn't that eventually end up that they don't enjoy using the bank, so they stop going to the bank for whether it's unit trust or whether it's banking. Does that scare yeah. you? This is the part that scares me more. I don't like them, but so many people like them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> see, uh, you see, uh, the issue is uh, I don't like them, you know. I really don't like them as a, as a user. Lah. Okay. Uh, but oh, I, I, I'm, I'm their customer. I, I, I do have quite some portfolio there. Okay. Uh, yes, they do have quite some accounts with them. Yeah, I don't like them. The mass market likes them, then you're okay. La. Correct. But so many of my friends are using them. So many of the business people I know are using them. So many SMEs that are solid are using them. Uh, yeah, and they are all very happy with it. Yeah, hmm. and, and if you actually notice, many of the people who support Public Bank are your parents' generation as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yes. And they are the people with the most FDs around, lying down there in the account. And what are the most beneficial asset of a bank is FD. Mm. <laughs> Better than any other thing, FD is steady. They're very happy when you've got a lot of FD there. So uh, yeah, with that, it makes sense to me why I buy them. Yeah. So um, we'll go into our own question now then. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I, I told you my most common question. What's your most common question that you been getting lately i've been i've been getting the most common question lately is two types definitely two uh one is actually one is actually asb i get the question a lot about asb financing like should i take the loan and stuff like that uh, should i actually take the loan right now is it the right time uh, so, 
yeah, there are different ways of them asking. Some of them, the way they ask is very bizarre. I also like, ah, huh? like they also can. Uh, but generally, it's in that same category. So uh, maybe I'll just give you my answer to that. Should you take an ASB loan? Okay, how many of you guys here are eligible for ASB loan? Uh, if you are eligible or you have an ASB loan, can you do it? Can you do one thing by writing there in the comment, uh, ASB? Yeah, so I know you are those guys who actually can take an ASB loan. Okay, oh. this is what I think. Because uh, you guys have seen me doing a video. Uh, I think ASB loan is fantastic at one end because they uh, because they are, what do you call that? Huh? Uh, they give you a leverage of volume, which ah. means, right, if let's say usually you have to buy an ASB, you pay 1,000 ringgit every month. After 12 months, you will only get 12,000. Okay? You will only get 12,000, which is actually nothing. Uh, mm. And that 12,000, uh, the way ASB calculate dividend uh, is very weird one. It's not going to take your final amount. It's going to take the average amount. Okay? What they do is that they take your average monthly balance. Okay? And then they actually calculate that amount with uh, the dividend that they are supposed to give. So let's say every month you put that, that is very little. Huh? So the only way to actually leverage a huge amount of dividend, right, is actually putting in one shot a lot. It's either you have 250,000 in cash, you drop it in, or either you take a loan. And the good thing is, the loan is actually lower. The loan is actually lower rate than the uh, interest that's given, uh, not interest, the dividend that's given. Huh? However, recently with the drop in ASB dividend, mm. this gap is closing in. Because put it this way, right? Last time ASB would give it 10%. And wow. then your interest rate is 5%. So you mm. still got 5% earning, you know, which is pretty good. Yeah. Very good. Now, however, right now with the with the in the dividend rate going down, huh? Going down, then the issue is this gap is closing. Mm. Very slim. So it comes down to the question of do you see that as something worth it or not? Yeah. And the rule of thumb is if your if your uh interest rate for your loan is just about one percent lesser than uh the return from ASB, then it may not be worth it already. Very likely mm. it's not gonna be worth it now. Yeah. I think there are quite a lot of comments as well on YouTube. Suin, I think your, your YouTube also got quite a lot of comments, you know, Suin. Is it? Yeah. A, sorry, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bit like, I don't know how to see. <laughs> okay, wait, let yeah, me check, let me check. We have, uh, we have multiple screen uh, on our... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy right, right, right now. So, it's like, yeah. um, I hear a lot of echo. Okay, let me see. I've started looking at my YouTube comments. Who is working on Monday? I'm working and <laughs> would stock capitalists going to live this morning? What's that about? I think one question, one, one comment I, I see a lot uh, uh, here uh, tonight uh, is people keep saying, uh, Suin, very pretty. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Suin is so shy. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so yes, uh, so yeah, congratulations for those who actually can get ASB. Uh, I think as long mm. as you calculate it properly, I think yeah, you may be able to get a good profit out of it. But I'm not sure about this year. Uh, this year, I mean, the whole market has dropped. Even if they don't give a good dividend, it's expected, I would say. I would say it's expected, mm. but I'm not predicting. So please don't quote me. Thank you very much. <laughs> so that's the most <laughs> common question that I'm getting. Yeah, uh, actually dividends a bit hard to say uh, right now with the revenues all compromised. <laughs> so yeah. what I want to ask you one thing, okay? What is the most bizarre question that you that you get? Like the most like like when you read the question and you go like what the <laughs> you're just like what the <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah. I got so, I have, I have a few la. I'm sure you have a few okay. so uh but one time I was asked like hey um I like what you're doing on your YouTube channel and I think it's really great that you are sharing all of this but can you just, uh, I give you money and then you help me invest. Uh? Then I give you like a thousand bucks, <laughs> two thousand bucks a year. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> you, 
you, you should actually say 2,000. Uh, not enough. Lah. You give me uh, 5 million. Okay, well. <laughs> hey, but I think it's, uh, it's definitely illegal, right? To do that for somebody hey, else. Hey, to take yeah. money, right? Illegal, illegal. Uh, okay. It's illegal. Yeah, uh, illegal. De- you are taking illegal deposit. You're not supposed to do that. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was like pretty bizarre. It was a nice compliment, but yeah, la, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. And I don't know, la, like I cannot I cannot imagine making these decisions for someone else. Like I make for myself already, like mm, okay, la, it's easier, but deciding for someone else is a whole new story. La. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. I, I agree. Yeah. Uh when you invest for yourself, it's a lot easier because it's your own money. When you invest with someone else, there's a lot of stress. Yeah. yeah, you're more careful, I think. Uh, and you don't know when they... Although people always say uh, they won't blame you if you lose money, uh, but when they lose money, uh, they will blame you. And, uh, that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I only invest with people that I really, 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 really trust. Yeah, yeah, I do invest yeah. with people at times, but only with people that I I can really, 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 really trust. Uh. Yeah. yeah. So Definitely. Uh, if not, yeah, cannot. <laughs> Just cannot lah. Hey, but what is your most bizarre question? You're sharing with me some that day, pretty strange ones. Okay, um, I would say that uh, that was bizarre. Okay, there was another one more that's quite interesting. One this category, uh, they will usually ask me in the different different ways, but generally okay. it comes in this pattern where, can you tell me how to predict the market or either a stock is going Ooh. up or down? Yeah. <laughs> Can you teach me how to do that prediction? So, hey, can you uh, teach me also? I, I got the answer. Let me tell you the answer. Uh, the answer is, uh, if I know, uh, I won't be doing YouTube. Uh. <laughs> if I predict, uh, which stock go up, which stock go down, uh, whether tomorrow market open, uh, go up or go down, uh, I won't be doing YouTube, uh, I can tell you. Uh, I will be somewhere else. Uh. <laughs> I'll be very, very busy every day predicting the market. Because I got a lot of money in it. Wow. <laughs> I, I think that question usually comes when uh, people are not experienced in, I would say pretty much any investment other than um, FD. And mm. even if they have experience in investing, very often is they have been investing under hearsay. Means people tell them they invest uh, and most of the time, I notice these people can't even tell the difference between a unit trust or a stock. Yeah, mm. they just know that it's investment. They only know that stock is dangerous, unit trust is safer, uh, which is not entirely true, people. Yeah, and um, yeah, so uh, I, my, my, my true recommendation is this. Uh, the truth is, even if you do until PhD, you won't be able to know. You can only make intelligent guess. Yeah, especially in the yeah. short term. Yeah. yeah. So that's why if you were to ever buy the aid or you go and look for any stock analyst report, you will see that every bank tells you a different pricing target. Yeah. yeah. So different yeah. buy sell uh, decisions from each bank. Yep. Yep. So no one knows. Uh, in fact, if you are so good at predicting, if you can be so good, the chances are either you are doing insider trading, which is you already know what is happening <laughs> in the company and you're buying it ahead of time. So that's illegal. Uh, or either uh, you are like Jim Simons. <laughs> do, do you know Jim Simons? No, who is this? Oh, you have a, Okay. So, okay. Everyone out there, if you're watching this, go and Google this guy called Jim Simons. Okay. I'm just going to write in the comment. Right. Jim. Jim Simons. Jim American Simon. mathematician. Yes. So he is a mathematician. Okay. And he's he is the founder of this fund called Renaissance Fund. Okay. Renaissance Funds. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what happened is that he is a prodigy, very good in mathematics. And then he was supposed to, and then he got recruited to work with uh, American Defense Force to crack the code of uh, Russia and. Uh, been between the Cold War time, like, they were, he was cracking quotes. Like. So he's doing all the, you know, like high-tech CIA kind of stuff, right? Yeah. And then he quite bored with that. He wanted to find some excitement, so he go and invest. And he made money, but he said this, I made money because of luck. Hmm. Uh, 
Uh, and so he started looking at the market. And when you look at the market, then you realize this one thing, there is a pattern. Mm-hmm. And you know, mathematicians are fantastic. So yeah. he just read the pattern. They came out with models and they started predicting. And eventually he found this company called uh, Renaissance and they have this thing called Medallion Fund. Uh, and Medallion Fund is a hedge fund. They only trade under short term. So they don't trade long term. Year in, year out, nothing less than 30%. Highest ever return in one year is 150%. Wow. It is the best performing hedge fund in the world. Okay. Uh, however, it is close to anyone already. No one can invest except if you are staff or you are people inside. Oh, yeah. okay. So, they close it off. Yeah. They close it because based on their model, they also say that they can only handle like 10 billion or something like that in funds. Anything more than 10 billion, they cannot, they cannot handle. It will go off. Yeah. So mm, they close yeah. it off. Yeah, so it, it is so good that literally, right, when at one at one time they fired a staff, the staff negotiated for his negotiated for his exit, right? And the negotiation, uh, one of it uh, is I want to stay on investing in the fund. Wow. Imagine nice. you fire the staff, uh, the staff hate you, uh, the staff hate but you they're already. Still, uh, they're the still staff invested. Say, yes, what well, my exit is I want it that I'm staying invested. Yeah. Mm. So that guy is legend, legend, yeah. He is, he's, he's, he's a bit funny also because he's a mathematician. He's not a trader, right? So he's more funny also. Yeah. So uh, that's, yeah, that's a bit of a off topic. But yeah, so that is uh, one question that I get. Correct. Kelvin said this. If can predict this live show will be Empat renamed Echo. Empat Echo TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, so... Do you want to take some questions from the floor or do you want to go yeah. on with like it's not that thing? I think I can, I can take some questions. I see some coming in on YouTube. Oh, yeah. oh just now the Woods, Woodstock cap is Berkshire's AGM. I, I really like to check out Berkshire's AGM. I didn't know it was called Woodstock. Uh, mm. It's actually quite interesting, but it's really, really long. Everyone can have access to it. Someone asked here, um hi guys what are your thoughts on robo advisors compared to mutual funds awesome call out by the way thank you so much yeah. robo advisors versus mutual funds i think okay like i'm assuming this is your answer but we prefer them mainly because the robo advisors we have access to are etf base or like market index base uh, and the fees are much cheaper lah. Mm. Yeah, mm. I think one of the most common question. Yes, a lot of people are asking about stash away at one point as well. Yeah, yeah. so we keep getting that, and uh, both of us actually have a referral link for stash away. Uh, if you yeah. guys are interested, you know, go ahead and use our referral link to actually open an account. Um, now the difference between uh, ETF and um, uh, the difference between a robo advisor and mutual fund is most of the robo advisor in the market are very are much more into passive investment strategies. Yeah, so um. What do we mean by that is that they tend to just track. Yeah, they then, like, for example, uh, most of ETF, you see, most of robo advisors you see, they will invest in number one ETF, which is a passive instrument. Mm. Uh, it is a passive instrument. It means that it's just going to take a collective, uh, take an average of the whole market. Yeah, like S&P 500, right? Now, mutual fund, on the other hand, there are many categories. Some would invest in growth stocks. Some would invest in REITs. Some would invest in uh, dividend stocks. Some would invest in even specific healthcare sector. Some would invest in only large cap. So there are multiple different ones. And usually the, the manager, the fund manager's role uh, is more active. Means they will have to run through all the company and pick and select individual stocks that they think have the potential of growing or fitting the objective of the company. And that's the reason why you pay a bit more, uh, not a bit more, yeah, I think a couple of percent more to mm. actually manage the fund, which is the yeah. upfront of 5%, at, uh, 2 to 5% depending on your agent or the platform they're using. And then the so yearly right. fee of uh, 1% something, like almost 2 yeah. yeah, that's what you're paying for. Yeah, however... Because it is human that's managing it for you, then you should be prepared of one thing. There are good managers and there are bad managers. Not that they are a good person or bad person, but their performance in terms of results is good or bad. 
So it's very mm. important that you actually look at the result, the track record of a particular fund. Yeah. Always yeah. read the fund fact sheet. They will tell you all the cumulative return, the analyzed return and everything. Else. Yeah. So that is actually the difference. Uh. And robo advisor would just follow the average. Yeah, it yeah. just follows an average. And mm. for like unit trust, uh, some are pretty good actually. What I like to do is if you really like unit trust funds, check out what are their top uh, shareholdings and that can give you mm. an indication as to what their strategy is and whether you can agree with it or not. Mm, mm. It's yep, quite hard yep. la, for them actually because they're an open-ended fund most of the time and when the moment people panic, they withdraw their funds. So the managers sometimes have no choice but to sell when it's unfavorable. So mm. yeah, it's, it's not easy. Yeah. Correct. They also have a problem with being a big fund. There's a fund size issue. Uh, mm. If they were to buy one stock, usually, right, everyone will notice that stock and then it will start creating more news and yeah, it will change things around. Yeah. yeah. So mm. that is one of the things. And uh, ah, I like you... this question. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, hey, yeah. You want to ask your question you were saying? No, I was, I was going to ask you, how do you focus? There are so many questions coming in. Oh, um, I also don't know. Lah. Sometimes actually I'm struggling to focus, but I'm very good at showing a face that I'm very relaxed. Lah. <laughs> yes, I mean, oops, for me, no, lah. I'm like blank. Like, you can see straight away that I'm like, oh my God, Yeah, man. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. So... Okay. <laughs> Oh, wow. Guess what? Genie Boy TV is on Suyin's YouTube. <laughs> oh, is it? Hi, Genie yeah. Boy. He just said hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, since you all talk about predicting stock, what do you all think about people who does prediction based on charts instead of actually studying the company itself? Ooh. Oh. You want to take this first? Um... Yeah, okay. Um, these are two different patterns. Uh, one is actually called a technical analysis and the other one is actually called fundamental where we actually study the company's uh, fundamentals. We read their annual reports, how they're doing in terms of financially. We understand the business model, the macroeconomics and all, right? That's called fundamental. Technical, on oh. the other hand, you're actually just reading charts. Now, there's no right and wrong, uh, but what I would say is this. When you're actually looking at technical, technical what tells you is a very simple thing only. Technical based on two things. Number one, what price is the stock or the particular instrument being transacted? Number two, how many people are transacting and how many times it changed hand? These are the information you get. And based on that, they will predict the behavior of the mass market and what's their response towards the stock. And with mm -hmm. that, they have a collective idea of what is the usual pattern. Like for example, when interest rate drop, people panic and then they will sell. So they will expect that uh, based on the volume transaction and the pricing right now, uh, the chances of it dropping is 80%. Like that, uh, that's actually uh, technical chart analysis essentially. Yeah? Oh, yeah. So uh, there's no right and wrong. Uh, it's just one is more towards market behavior. The other one is very much towards fundamental. I would say if you're very good, combine both. Yeah, mm. combine both as in um, understanding how the market is, how the company is doing well, and then using the analytic chart to decide on at which point to enter. Yeah, um, but that one, I don't do that because uh, I think that one need to take a lot of time to keep looking uh, and I'm not so patient uh, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm not so patient, uh. <laughs> I really admire technical analysts. Uh, when it comes to how they how they invest their money or how they speculate, it takes up a lot of time and a lot of effort and they have to be constantly on the ball. So what I noticed a lot of analysts or like people who practice technical analysis, they now start to just look at companies that have strong fundamentals already and they only choose to trade those stocks. And I think that is the part where they have an, a, like, a little bit more of an advantage where they can see the trend. Because sometimes for us, like fundamental um, value, inve value investors, we 
kind of like blindly buy at a certain price without realizing that maybe the trend is still going down. So we could pay a bit cheaper or like we could buy at a cheaper price, but because we don't know how to analyze that trend, we miss a bit more opportunities in a sense. But then the spectrum is huge. La. There are technical analysts that don't really look at fundamentals. So yeah, I guess you just need to find out what is suited to you and your personality. And for me, I'm lazy. La. Like uh, Peter said, it takes up too much time. Value investing easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I, I think uh, for me, my concept is when I buy a stock, I will hold it over a long term. So uh, I'm not interested in going in and out in a very short period of time. Uh, so like, like, I, like I've told you guys, right? Uh, my idea is that if if two two weeks ago, three weeks ago, if you bought public bank at uh, 15 ringgit, I bought it a month ago at 13 ringgit. Okay. Mm. And maybe tomorrow someone bought it at 11 ringgit. Yeah, I will feel very bad because I bought it at 13, now I dropped $2. You may feel terrible because from 15 ringgit dropped to 11. But 10 years later, when it's 28 ringgit, uh, all three of us are very happy. Yeah. Provided so, you never sell. Uh. Yeah, provided you never sell. Uh. So uh, in my opinion, I I don't think I want to spend too much of time, you know, sitting down there, just deciding on where to pick the right timing. Uh. I'm a bit Fair lazy uh, to be honest. Uh, same, same. All right. So, um, I think we'll just answer some questions. Uh, huh? Go on, because I think quite many questions. And I think yeah. that there's one I want to ask. I think there's, a, there's an overwhelming of questions that actually has been get, we have been getting regarding okay. derivatives. That comes oh. in the form of uh, eToro. Mm. That comes in the form of, uh, I wouldn't say Bitcoin. There's the next one that maybe we should talk a little bit about. So you mean like <laughs> futures and things like that? Lah. Yeah, derivatives. So, uh, do you have any? Uh, do you have any opinion about derivatives? Uh, no, definitely not. Because for me, I try not to do too many different things. For me, I like stocks, and within the asset class of stocks, is already so rich in diversity that I never delve into derivatives. I I, I don't think I'm that intelligent to. Further, mm -hmm. further pursue that. I'll leave it up to other people. Lah. Right, right, right. Yeah. So uh, I personally, I I don't play with derivatives as well. So I don't do warrants. I don't do options. Mm. I feel option is very dangerous. Yeah. Um, I don't do warrants as well. Um, but I I do invest a little bit in CFDs. Uh, the reason being is because I, I used to play a bit of forex, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't have the patience at the end of the day. Yeah. So for those of you who are asking about Forex as well, that's one of it. Okay. Uh, if, if you actually hear people talking about Forex, right, most of the time they are not really buying and selling currency just to let you know. Yeah. Uh, you will not see your friend, right, taking 1 million USD go and change to uh, 1 million rupee or either 1 million AUD, you know. Uh, that's not how it works. Yeah, that, that one is real Forex, by the way. Uh, so what you see your friend trading, right, you see all the advertisement, right, they are actually trading with this instrument called CFD, contract for difference. And that is mm. what you see when you actually uh, look at eToro. Yeah, that's what you actually see. Okay, when you actually see this thing, right? Contract for difference, eToro, right? Okay, it is one of the most interesting complex instrument. Okay, how it works is that it is like a side bet. Uh, I always like to use this example. Uh, if today you want to buy Toto, la, you want to buy Empat Eko, uh, there's two ways that you can buy one. Number one, right? You can actually go to Toto, queue mm -hmm. up, and then you buy with the proper way. Uh, then number two uh, is actually you go to the coffee shop, you see an uncle sitting down there, and then you say, Uncle, Uncle, lie, 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 uh, 写字, 写字, uh, 四个, 四个, uh, like that, uh, 四二三四, or whatever. La. So you just give a number. Then the uncle, when you make money, when let's say hit, uh, top already hit price, uh, they'll call you uh, the uncle, hey, hey, hey brother, brother, you the chong chang liao, uh, your uncle nah, di, uh, can come and take money. Like that. Oh. Uh, now, so CFD is like the uncle. Oh. Uh, CFD is like the uncle. Uh, but uh, but uh, 
CFD is actually regulated, but very loosely regulated and not regulated in Malaysia. So whenever you are investing in eToro, you must remember you're not regulated in Malaysia. Singapore has a regulation for CFD. Uh, Australia has a regulation for EFD. US, UK, all those have. Malaysia tak ada. Okay. Yeah. But it's not illegal. It's just unregulated. Okay. Uh, so it what? becomes very grey. Uh, what, what are the risks when okay. you're unregulated? Uh, so the risk is this. Okay. If they close shop, tutup kedai lari, you have it, your money is with mm. them. Okay. So when you want to invest in the CFD, you need to make sure that the company is very big and they won't collapse. Uh, so there are certain banks that have CFD, uh, like even Saxo Bank, all those, they have CFDs. Uh. Uh, so doesn't mean that CFD has to be a Chekai broker. They are good yeah. brokers. Uh, uh, eToro is one of the like, biggest uh, around as well. Uh, I think uh, there, is, there are a few reputable ones, uh, but again, it is not regulated in Malaysia law, you have to remember. So if anything happen, uh, yeah, like that. Uh, and, and that one is a whole long topic on the rest of the stuff. Uh, so I will not go into it. Uh, so I think that's about that. Uh, but one mm. advantage actually why I actually use CFD as well is because CFD allows me to buy stocks in portions. Uh, especially, for example, if I want to buy Berkshire halfway, uh, it is 200 plus or 100 plus right now per unit of share. Mm, for B, that's uh. USD. Yeah, for B class, it's yeah. How much? One hundred ninety over USD. Yeah. If I want to buy hundred, is thousand plus, right? So if I only have fifty USD, I can't buy it. But with CFD, you can just buy fifty. Uh. Uh, but nowadays, uh, the good thing is, uh, I think a few months back, many companies start practicing this thing called fractional shares. You know, you should go and check it out. Oh, I've seen. Shares. I've seen Singapore have uh Singapore has quite a few products right now coming out with fractional shares. Mm, Some yes, uh yes. subscriber was commenting on it. I thought it was quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. So fractional share is actually the similar concept. Let's say you don't have 100 to buy a uh but try happy, you can actually just put 50 50 USD and then you can buy 50 USD worth of Bashar Habway. Uh, but you won't be able to go to AGM lah, huh? Forget about it lah. Because <laughs> they are holding it in trust for you and you just get the return from there. Yeah. Mm. So uh I think yeah, that is for that. What about gold? I think a lot of people are also asking about gold, silver, bitcoin. Why okay. not? You wanna Yeah, I have some questions on YouTube as well. They're asking about stocks versus bonds and uh do you trade in gold? For I think personally for me. I've just been so invested in stocks and excited about the first big bear market in my investing life that I have not really been too cautious with my assets. So I've never really bought any gold because I do believe that for stocks over time, which is when I'll be needing my money, uh, is a better alternative for me. But if you are a bit more on the risk averse side and you want a bit more of uh, balance or evenness in your portfolio performance, it's a good idea to have some bond funds or gold so that at least when stocks are really tanking, you have some backup that are lifting up your portfolio performance. So that's just a recommendation of how people are careful with their portfolios. But I don't do it. Yeah, yeah. So diversifying, I think uh, there, there's this saying in actually the market for uh, the only free lunch you get investing is diversifying. Yeah. The only free lunch you get is diversifying. Yeah. Mm. So mm, I would say that if you have the kind of money, diversifying is good. If you have very, very little money, then just focus on. Huh? <laughs> yeah, and mm. uh, a little and a lot, it really depends on personal definition, to be honest. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but I personally think that, uh, I personally, I don't really invest in gold, but I have a bit of gold. So I'm not, um, I'm not like, you know, very eager to go and invest in gold, that kind of. Uh, but yeah, lately got something interesting. Uh, I've, been, I've been approached uh, and been hearing about this company who actually has a very interesting concept 
they are starting to come up with gold backed security. <clears throat> and usually, uh, gold, uh, when people come and tell me this kind of stuff, usually I'm very reluctant because a lot of scammy, scammy stuff like Gene- Geneva Gold, that kind, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, in this case, the company that does this is actually the. They are actually provide. They are actually supplying gold to Tabung Haji and Bank Rakyat and Bank Mamalat all those. Interesting. Yeah. So it's real, real guys, and I know some information of what they are up to lately, lah. And just so happened after that, I found out that actually I know, I know uh, one of the owners, lah. So I I will be inviting the CEO to give a talk. Yeah, to talk about it. Uh, and what they are doing with it kind of changed my mind because it's very interesting in the sense where they allow you, they, 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 they allow you to invest in gold with them. Let's say if I were to invest a thousand uh, ringgit in gold with them. Usually you invest gold, you cannot use them. Uh, you just leave it there, uh, right? Then nothing mm. you can do with it. What can you do with gold, right? Yeah. So... You have two choices when you invest the gold with them. Number one, you can ask them to mint out a physical gold for you. Okay. Oh. So if you want to mint out, go ahead, mint it out. If you don't want to mint it out, you can put it with them and they custody it for you. Okay. But when they custody it for you, then you can also do this one thing where you can spend. They will borrow you money to spend, which is 75% of the gold amount. So let's say you, you invest 1,000, you can spend up to 750 ringgit. <clears throat> and they charge you an interest rate of 3.5% per year for that amount. So it's like a credit card like that. Mm. So now uh, suddenly uh, it becomes a gold back currency, you know. You get what I mean? Yeah. It becomes a gold back currency. Because they are not gonna take away your gold. What they do is that if tomorrow the gold increases in price, okay, then it will uh then it will your your value will go up, uh, but you still only owe them whatever you spend. Uh, mm. So that's the whole idea. La. So yeah. creative. So, uh, Their instruments yeah. nowadays. Yeah, yeah. They are, they are, they are, they are. Hey, imagine uh, these fellas, I can think about this idea. They are not like yeah, our they... HR, no. Hey, oh I tell my... you, they are, they are, they are old. It's, it's, it's a, it's a more senior lady. I was like, wow, uh-huh. you so king. Uh? <laughs> I thought like this kind of thing, like advanced young people think, uh, you know, you think, uh, well, she just look at me. <laughs> yeah. No, la, but anyway, that was another day topic. Yeah. That was a very good one. Yeah. So some people are saying that you look like your Bihin. Your Bihin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, and I think Bitcoin, Bitcoin is actually a question that people are also asking. Mm. Yeah. Cryptocurrency. What do you think about crypto actually, Suin? Crypto. I I think it is like the technology behind it is the intriguing part. I don't know how to value it. That's the problem that stops me from investing in it. And if I were mm. to invest in it, I will only put like maybe say, oh, my stock, po- my stock portfolio less than 1% if I mm. ever bought. But mm. I don't know how to value it. So <clears throat> it's more of a risk. It's a big gamble for me. It wouldn't be an investment. Right, right. right. Yeah. Do, so, do you uh, buy was... crypto? Uh, I wasn't interested in it last time. Uh, hmm. Last year, I watched a video. Mark Cuban actually said that he invests actually 10% of his portfolio into crypto. That's uh, high. Uh, uh, but you must remember, la, he's, he's, uh, he got a lot of money. La, so there's nothing for him, right? <laughs> he's Mark Cuban. But right? regardless um, though, 10% is a huge amount. Regardless yeah. of how much money you have. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So um, bullish, the concept on it is this, which I, I can get it. So I went on a crypto craze at one point. I, I actually don't mm-hmm. like crypto. In, or not say don't like, I'm not interested. Then at one point after he said that, I started reading. And then I picked up this book called uh, Confessions, of a Crypt- Confessions of a Crypto Millionaire. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So it's quite an interesting book. Uh, Confessions of a Crypto Millionaire is about this guy who actually invested in the cryptocurrency and now he's a multi-millionaire. Uh, actually, I invited him for a live stream. Yeah, he was okay. in America. Yeah, he's in America. He's a Kwilo. Yeah. Then, uh, but recently he's, uh, you know, not, uh, I think because of the lockdown, everything also, he said like, you know, probably after that, when he talked about that. Yeah. So anyway, 
the interesting yeah. thing is this. Uh, what I found about crypto is that number one, the technology behind it. Number two is the what people believe about it. Uh, and here's where it gets a bit crazy because if those of you who actually understand the history of currency, you will actually understand that uh, we are in this thing called floating currency. Okay, Floating currency basically means that um, our currency is actually purely, the, the, our value of our currency is purely based on supply and demand. Okay, If you don't understand, never mind, you can slowly go and read it up. Yeah, uh, But uh, usually last time, very long time ago, it was actually what they call gold-backed currency, which means that there was gold supporting your currency. Last time is every dollar of USD you can change for $1 of gold. And we are all packed against USD. Now, however, after Nixon removed the gold back and then it became a floating currency. Yeah. Now, and with a lot of things happening all around the world over the many years, Great Depression, this and that, da, 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 we all know this one thing, la, actually, currency system is a bit flawed one. Mm. The banking mm-hmm. system is quite flawed in itself, okay? Because it's a debt, debt system, okay? Everything is based on debt, okay? Uh, now, why people are so crazy about uh, cryptocurrency is that they believe, right, eventually this system will collapse, okay? One day this system will not be well, and then you will need to look for something new to replace it. And the mm. same idea with gold is that we believe that, let's say Malaysian ringgit is not worth it. Yeah, I shouldn't keep Malaysian ringgit, so therefore I invest in gold. gold. Why I flee from stock market? Because you buy the stock in Malaysian ringgit. Uh, so even if the stock market increased by 100,000, also no use because Malaysian ringgit is currency has been decimated. Uh, your currency, yes. Yeah. So they so, are looking for a safe haven. Yeah. So like talking about safe haven currencies or safe haven assets, I think it's important to make that distinction right now because in say a recession or when we are looking at our currencies are depreciating, people tend to look for things like gold. That's why gold is doing really well right now. And USD. USD tends to be the other safe haven. Yep. Strong. Lah. And it is... Yeah, so like I guess thinking about it now, there are so many different things that we can put our money into that is very easy to get distracted as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think end of the day... We are living in a world where we have a lot of options. Uh, we are spoiled with options of what to invest, how to invest. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to pick and decide what do you want to do and what do you want to mm. focus on. Yeah, because uh, the truth is you will not see a person who actually invests in everything and then suddenly become very rich. Yeah, there are people who actually do one business and do very well in the business and invest in everything. But they got rich not because of investment, but because of the business. Business. Uh, yeah. People who got rich because of investment are usually very focused as well. They focus mm. in one particular instrument. They may have other things just to have like certain backup and diversity. But uh, it usually is yeah, like not everything. You got to focus yeah. on. Yeah. Not, not overly allocated. Yeah. So there are some questions on Swin's side. Why not let us answer some questions on the okay. Swin's uh, YouTube? Let me check. YouTube side. Uh, okay, I'll go from bottom to up. What do you think about the corona situation in Singapore? <laughs> this question. Uh, what about mm-hmm. it? Uh? You mean like how long they uh, extended your circuit breaker? Actually, like let's talk about Malaysia right now. We are getting a bit more relaxed in terms of uh, businesses can start opening on Monday and things like that. For me, I'm worried about second waves and more infection uh, or like the spreading of the virus. But at the same time, I understand la, it's the longer businesses are not able to operate, the worse our economy is going to perform. And that trickles down into our investments, but also like in real cases of people like ourselves, uh, employees or like people who are self-employed. Mm-hmm. It's a scary time and it's a very unprecedented time. So I think we just take it day by day to, to figure out where we want to go from here. What about you, Mr. Money TV? What do you think of 
the situation right now? Uh, I, I think that uh, I'm not sure whether is it a good choice to actually open up the economy so quickly. Yeah, because uh, the truth is that, like you say, if we just have one person that is that is undiscovered and roaming outside there, right? It spreads like wildfire very quickly. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, the first case reported in Malaysia was like, I think uh, around February, right? Yeah, and then within a month, right, we, we are on lockdown already. So, and I think that if there's another wave coming, it will be extremely, extremely scary. Mm. Yeah, it will just prolong the whole thing. But I also can understand why they want to open up the economy because there are many companies that are going bankrupt at oh, this yeah. point. Yeah. Many, yeah. And uh, it's very sad. So uh, I think that the best way in terms of, I mean, we are a finance channel, so we talk about money, right? Mm. Yeah. So the implications of investing right now uh, into mm. stocks. So I see a read question. Uh, yeah. It feels very uncertain. So we, we know that companies have been performing historically quite well, but we don't really know whether they are able to pull through in this kind of times. Think about companies like Air Asia. They have a big uphill battle ahead. And yeah, yeah it's super uncertain. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but on the other hand, let us look at the bright side live, right? Yeah, and as usual, this is what I also think. I think that it is a time that uh, is a time that wealth can change hands. It is a time that opportunity is up for many smaller players. Big players are struggling because they are not nimble enough to move in this current situation. And um, but you see, it is you see many people taking advantage and capitalizing on the current current uh crisis for mm. example for example mr money tv grew so much during this period of time because you all got nothing better to do other than watching live like that's your only entertainment out so i for me i have to be honest i capitalize on this time by doing live yeah uh, some people that you all see that we are inviting all the time uh different different people they they started cooking from home and they mm. started delivering things uh, some actually uh, started making all, all sorts of people they, they, they built website for people they they you know do something about it and some like middle company that were not the top they were small enough to move and they changed the way they do things and now they are in fact adapting better than the larger companies so mm. what I think is that instead of spending time worrying Think about how you can capitalize on the current crisis and make better of your own life. Hmm. And the truth is, investing will only work for you if you have money. If your income is low, forget about talking about things like fire, things like uh, you know financial independent retire early. Yeah. I tell you, don't talk about all those because no use. On. If you can only earn 2005, huh, forget about fire. Even if you're Warren Buffett also, you can forget about it because <laughs> I mean, if you're 1,000 ringgit only uh, in your investment, uh, you compound by even 10% a month. Uh, you know, it's not going to do you, make you a multi-millionaire or billionaire. Lah. So mm -hmm. you still need to make money. And, and that's where I would say that capitalize by, if you want to be an employee still, then you must bring more value than your colleagues are bringing at this time by adapting well. If you are doing business, capitalize by looking at the current situation and do something great and sell. Yeah, whatever that it takes, whatever that it takes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We can see a whole influx of um, people selling online courses. Um, but I think it is, is a very important time to, to do solar because we are uncertain about our next income. And you know what you, what you said about uh, forgetting about investing if we are earning too little, I think this is something that we should talk a bit more about because you know, we oh, yeah. always 
yeah, we always talk about how to invest and how to save money, but we neglect to talk about earning money and earning potential. That is another aspect that we really need to hone in on and like really just increase it by hook mm-hmm. or by crook. Like we really need to make yeah. more money and find ways to do that. Yeah, agree, agree. Yeah, and and uh, I'll just put a caveat when I say that uh, forget about investing when you're not earning much. I don't mean that you shouldn't invest. What mm. I mean is that it will not make you rich, okay? But remember to still learn how to invest because when you got money and you don't know how to invest, also no use. So like for me, when I first started, I got no money, but I invest very little in the stock market. And then after that, I took out all my money from the stock market to actually do business. And then nice. I did well in business. Then I have money, D, then I slowly invest back my money. So uh, that's what I mean. Don't don't say that you, you are not going to invest. But in between that, where I say I'm not investing, I just mean that I'm not very actively investing. But I say invested in things like Unitrust. I say invested in things like whatever that I can find my hands on that is of a smaller amount. Yeah. So mm-hmm. look for affordable investments. Yeah. Yeah. I see mm-hmm. some questions here. What do you do for mm-hmm. a living? Uh, so I was a teacher before. And now I wanted to learn sales. So I'm in a sales job. So... I, I guess I can tell you a little bit about it. I was scared. Um, I love teaching, but I was scared that if I just stayed in it my whole life, uh, whether the skills would be f- fully transferable. So that's why I wanted to pick up another skill and practice it. Yeah, I think, I think that was a really bold move, you know. Uh, I, rarely, I rarely see teachers where I actually live and then go into corporate and then doing sales. It's, mm. it's a very huge transition because uh, one is you dominate the class. <laughs> you are the boss among 40 people and suddenly you go and do sales. You got to like, um, you got to like, you know, uh, turn the whole position around. Now you're going and serve people in the sense of like, you can't dominate. You got to, you know, be uh, persuasive and all that kind of stuff. So how, how do you actually cope with that? Actually, uh, I think teaching right now is so different from how we experienced it last time. So I was in like a class of 50 people uh, last time and the teacher valued our silence more than anything. But when I was teaching, what we valued was participation and engagement. So I felt more like an entertainer than mm. a dominator or boss in the class. So... Uh, I think there was another question from Kelvin earlier about how do you educate stubborn, reckless, yellow millennials about the importance of financial management? So what I learned from being a teacher was that it is also very much to do with sales. But what you're selling is whether you can engage with them and make it entertaining and make them care about something like their studies, uh, which is harder to do. So I didn't feel like there was a very big difference in uh, moving from teaching to sales. The only thing I felt was the age group of the people that I was interacting with. And also in sales, I have to use more Mandarin. La, and my Mandarin is like half past. La, so that is, <laughs> <laughs> that is the biggest difference. Uh, I also think it's very important um, when we teach kids, we are teaching them or preparing them for jobs that don't exist uh, yet right now. We're preparing them for the future and to model this same mindset of growth and adapting. I thought that was an important part of my learning process. Also. So I'm still, still learning. La. Sales is not easy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think uh, sales is one of the, if you ever have the opportunity to jump into sales, uh, I would say go ahead. Uh, but please remember that you're, you have to be able to take rejection. Yeah. Mm. So for those of you guys who are watching, uh, I would say that sales is probably the fastest way to learn business. Yeah, because every business you need sales. Yeah. In fact, uh, when you actually look at uh, value investing and a lot of investing books, right? Uh, one of the things that they always caution people, uh, sometimes they say that uh, many people actually forget about sales is a very important uh, aspect of uh, evaluating a stock. Ah, that was said by who? Philip Fisher. 
yes, uh, uncommon profit for common stocks. Yeah. Mm. So he used this method called scuttlebutt where you actually talk to them. So he said you need to learn to appreciate the sales team. Uh, what I would say is that if you have the chance to actually learn how to do sales, go ahead and do it because it will really teach you how to get the product out. No matter how great is your product, if you can't sell it, it's useless. It's useless. Yeah. So yeah, learn how to do sales. I, I think that's when I grow a lot. Uh, and if you ever ask yourself this question, one of the most common questions I hear people saying is that, I don't know how to do sales because I don't know how to talk. So Mr. Money, you can talk very well. So then that's why you do sales. So Suyin, you can talk very well. That's why you do sales. I tell you the truth, right? That's a lie. That's a lie. Because why right, is that? the best salespeople are not the best guys who knows how to talk. Are people who listen. Hmm. If you see me do sales, uh, I talk a lot less. Uh, I only talk a lot in front of the camera and with my friends. Uh. When I'm doing sales, I talk a lot less. I only talk to warm up. After that, I'm always listening. Mm, then only thing. I talk to give solution. Yeah. So in fact, if you're very quiet, uh, your challenge will be to learn how to avoid awkward silence. Uh, my challenge as someone who loves to talk is to shut up and listen. Yeah. So we both have our challenge. So it's not true if you say that you don't know how to talk, you shouldn't do sales. Yeah, challenge yourself. Agreed. It's MCO. Agreed. Buck up. Go and do something. Yeah. 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 Lots of things that you okay. can sell. Yeah. I think at this point, um, I think, yeah, I think the easiest thing that you can sell right now is actually food, you know? Like do, those who love to cook, just go and sell some food from your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, also, if you are interested in things like digital products, I see a lot of people selling like presets, things like that. Like very, uh, sorry, by presets, I mean like filters for uh, editing videos or editing photos. Like even those kind mm -hmm. of products seem very interesting and you just need to create them once and host it on a selling platform. I think that's pretty cool and perhaps less time consuming also. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very good one. Like templates uh, or even mm. just do some freelance, help people build website and so on, right? I think that is, uh, those are all good opportunities right now. Uh. Yeah. yeah. So yes, something you're right. As long as there's a market, anything sells. Yeah. yeah. As long as you can position your product to be a solution to people's problem, you can sell again. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So I think we have already... We exceeded the time. It's really a fun conversation having you guys. Today is a very fresh <laughs> take having uh, uh, someone to talk together with me. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it is really great. Yeah, hanging out together online and chatting with you guys. So you know what, guys? If you guys enjoy this, uh, do us a favor. Uh, go and subscribe to Suyin's uh, YouTube. It's uh, um, Suyin Ong. Oh, that's yeah. my name. Yeah, I will, I will, we'll, get, we'll write it there at the comment. Su Yin Ong. Sorry, you couldn't so, answer every single question though. Yeah. Mm. So go and subscribe to Su Yin on her YouTube. Uh, go and like her on her uh, Facebook page. And uh, yeah, if you guys like this session, do us a favor, write in the comment there as well that uh, do again. Uh, or either write and call. Then uh, <laughs> I'm going to get her up again. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> every Every time I get a text message from uh, Peter, right, I get damn nervous because if, if you know anything about me or like if you've been watching my YouTube channel or Facebook on Sweden Invest, I've been avoiding doing lives like the plague. But this guy is super convincing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you guys gotta help us help 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 us to convince her to actually come actually i spoke to her for about two two weeks already yeah so get her to get her to come on we'll do more show we'll talk more probably we'll also invite other financial bloggers as well as much as we can yeah, yeah we then, have a lot we're gonna have a good conversation we a yeah we have so many yeah i'm actually trying to get an islamic financial planner a guru oh. to actually come up as well yeah so that's one of it uh anyway everyone Thank you very much for watching. Uh, Suyin, why not? Uh, is there any parting words that you want to leave it to everyone tonight? Um, I like that y'all are taking the initiative to be here. So I really like that about all of you. 
And please follow Mr. Money TV because he gives out a lot of good information, not necessarily by the stocks that he talks about. Uh, and <laughs> if yes. you don't know anything, if you don't know anything, Google, Google has been our greatest asset. Lah. I think Mr. Money, you can agree with that. I don't know yeah, much. I just totally. Google a lot. <laughs> all right so uh, we enjoy having you guys being our follower thank you very much for supporting our channel especially those who have been uh, recently supporting us and those who have been following us since the start of it uh, so thank you very much we love you guys and we will see you next time have a good night enjoy your Sunday have a good rest tonight see you guys Yay. Oh, how do I stop it and stream? Bye, guys. <laughs>